evening uh, from our side this morning. I'm glad to be able to see all of you. Here in this part of the world, we always say praise the Lord and then the people say amen. So I just want to say to all of us, praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm glad to be back again, to be blessed together with you. And it's important to know that every time God is speaking, he's speaking to all of us, them that are, them that are preaching and them that are um, listening, God is speaking to all of us. And I'm glad that I can be together with you as the Lord is speaking to us. Um, it's another great day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. I always say it's good to have an expectation. So thank you, Pastor Newton, together with Lillian, all the other leaders, and all of you for allowing me to be here today as I share the word of God with you. I do not take it for granted. And again, I'm born again, and I love the Lord. Um, I just want to... Um, to continue from where we reached yesterday, um, you know, the scripture uh, says in Job 20, a Job, Job, Job 28, it's not the same scripture, 38, it's not the same scripture that uh, Pastor Newton was talking about. You know, uh, 38 verse 9 says, there is a spirit in a man. There is a spirit in a man. And the inspiration of the almighty God gives them understanding. In our lives, there is a spirit in each one of us. There is a spirit in a man. Let me get it right for you. There is a spirit in a man and the inspiration, good. There is Job 32 verse eight, but there is a spirit in a man and the breath of the almighty gives them understanding. I want to say that one again. Job 32 verse 8. But there is a spirit in a man and the breath of the almighty God gives them understanding. And as we listen to the word of God, I want us to have this attitude that the things of God are spirit to spirit. And it's the spirit that is in you that captures the things of the spirit. And that's why um, Lauren will always tell us to open up our spirit or to yield our spirit because the engagement of the word of God is spirit to spirit. And that's why the scripture says there is a spirit in a man and the inspiration of the almighty God gives them understanding. So the, our understanding or the understanding that we are going to get of the word of God has to be inspired by God. And it is your spirit that is going to be inspired. And I'm glad to be here again so that we can be given uh, that understanding together with you. And again, another scripture I love, you, I love so much is um, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 4. That scripture says that God, um, who is my God and your God? It is his will that you all get saved. I know uh, in many parts of the world that I have gone, people don't say they are saved. They say they are Christians. And because they are Christian and Christians, that's why uh, in this part of the world, we'll say we are saved. So the scripture says it is God wills that we all get saved, right? So it is not the will of God that anyone should perish, but all should reach repentance. That is the will of God. But when you read that scripture I have said before, there is a comma, and that means after that, we all come to the knowledge of the truth. And I want you to know there is a knowing. I always say there is a knowing that we need to get to. And the scripture says it is the knowledge of truth. So there is a truth in God that we need to come to. That scripture says, after getting saved, God wants us to come into the knowledge of 
truth. And that's why we are gathered together here this morning, all of us, because we are all on a journey and we are all in the business of coming to the truth, to the knowledge of truth. And that truth, the Bible says, we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. So there's that truth that we need to come to so that when we come to that truth, we shall be set free. Praise the Lord. And we go back to our theme scripture that we began interacting with yesterday. And that is um, the First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. My emphasis comes from verse 6. But I want to read that one in context because I believe in reading the word in context and with an inquisitive mind. We have to come to that level of reading the word in context and reading the word with an inquisitive mind where we have to scrutinize the scripture and capture the mind of God. What is really God saying in all this? And the scripture says, we read yesterday, I want to read again. And then we said, rolling. And I, and I, this is Paul talking, you know, and I, brethren, when I came to you, um, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. And I remember saying, we are, uh, you know, we are living in funny times. The first century, you know, the 21st century church is full of terminologies, great things that when, you know, big words, you know, um, excellence on the physical, which is not bad. But uh, I want you to know that in all those things, we have to know where we are coming from. Where are we? You know, we need to seek to pause a bit and ask ourselves, where are we at in the things of God, in the knowledge of God, in the becoming like Christ? Where are we at? And therefore, therefore I said yesterday, Paul says, I did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Christ Jesus and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And I said at that point that we have different kinds of wisdom. We have the wisdom of men. We have this wisdom of the world. We have wisdom of the demons, but we are pursuing the wisdom of God because we are of, we are of God. Then I just want to jump, uh, as I want to jump while seated and go to verse six. Verse six says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. And I really want to remind you, I put an emphasis when it comes to maturity, the things of God are not exposed to those that are not mature. And maturity is long term. It's a work that we have to do. We have to keep on. We have to keep on stretching. I want to, I wish I could stand up and demonstrate. We have to keep on stretching. Because when we touch one, we we touch one thing in God, we realize that there's something higher that we have not touched. And therefore we have to keep on stretching because when we think we have it, when we have a dream uh, today, that's not all of it. When we speak in tongues today, that's not all of it. We have to keep on stretching because we cannot exhaust God. And there is more in God that we have to keep accessing. So I encourage all of us to keep on stretching. Keep the posture of stretching in your spiritual walk. And, and every time you have a rubber band, I don't know whether that's how you pronounce it, 
when you have a rubber band, um, you have to stretch it to be able to tie or pack a lot of things. When you leave it like that, it compresses. And therefore, I want you to know, when you stretch yourself, you know, God has so much to do with you. God, you can handle so much for God. But if we don't stretch, then there's no capacity to handle what God is putting in us every now and then. And therefore, I encourage you, let's put the posture, you know, let's obtain the posture of stretching every now and then. So that's why I say maturity is a walk. And I always give this example. Every time when I was growing up, when I was younger than I look today, that those days, we used to be chased from the house, being told, go to play um, out there. I remember there was no field. You go to play in the road or uh, in the bush. Why? Because there are important things that are being shared. There are important things that are being discussed. But because we are children, we are not mature. We are not able to hold that. So our parents would ask us to go outside. And I fear for myself. Um, every time I ask myself, every time that God is sharing important things, important, releasing revelation, releasing important things, is it possible that I am one of them that are told to go outside because I lack capacity? I am not mature to be able to handle what God is saying. And that's why I'm encouraging us that God would want to work with you, would, walk to, would want to work with, with us, but we have to mature. And maturity is personal. Maturity does not get your pastor. Maturity is not anyone else. You have to determine in your heart that year 2022, it cannot be the way I was 2021. I have to mature in prayer. I have to mature to know how to handle conflict. I have to mature to know how to maintain my relationship. I have to mature in knowing on how to handle the word of God. Because when God notices our maturity, he's going to work with us. So the wisdom is not, the scripture says, this wisdom is not for them that are, are not mature. It is only for them that are mature. So the Bible says, so, verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The wisdom of God is not on the surface. Things that are important are not on the surface. The wisdom of God is not on the, say, the Bible says it's a mystery. It's a secret. That's what I want to say. It's a, it's a treasure. The hidden wisdom, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before um, before ages for our glory. And I said yesterday, this wisdom, the Bible says is hidden, but I want you to know it is hidden for me and for you. It is for our good. That's why it is hidden. That's why it's not, it's not for everybody else. It is for the children of God and more so the mature children of God. And then the Bible says it was ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of this world knew. Um, and had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord. I want to say something there before we proceed. This wisdom, even the devil doesn't know it because it was ordained before. So he, he did not know. He is a creator. He's, the, he's, he's created. He's not the creator. The devil is a is the is a cre, is a creation is created is not the creator the, the creator now the creator uh, God is the creator we are the created and I want you to know this wisdom was before time and it was ordained before time so the devil cannot access it unless you 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 expose it to him and that's why I say many times we think the devil is powerful he is not powerful. Actually, his, his place is under your feet, you know, and anything that is under your feet, you have power over it. And therefore, the devil is under your feet. 
And that's why I said he has to put you and me under pressure so that we start speaking. And when we speak, he just captured what you have said and starts working against you. Because until you speak, he cannot know your plans. And that's why most of us, I encourage you, every time we are pursuing great things, it is not time to talk. It is not time to put it on Facebook. It is not time to put it on Twitter. It is not time to go talking everywhere. It is time to engage God and tell God, give me strength because I have to accomplish this. Because when we expose it to the devil, we open ourselves for a fight. We open ourselves you know, for competition and it takes longer for us to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. Are we together? So the Bible says, um, this wisdom, the rulers of this age knew, had they known, did you know, and the rulers of the world, the rulers knew that Jesus Christ was to multiply himself in you and in me, they would have, you know, they, they would have dealt with him, okay? They did not, you know, they, if they knew, they knew, you know, that Jesus was to be multiplied, that I am a carrier of Jesus. You are a carrier of Jesus. He was to be multiplied. Had they known, they would not have crucified him because he would have remained just him. He would have remained where he is. But as long as he was crucified, when we say Lord Jesus, we got an opportunity to say Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. That's why Jesus is in you and Jesus in, is in me. Jesus is in every one of us who has said, Jesus Christ, come into my life. So if these rulers of the ages, if they knew they, that is going to be um, multiplied, they would not have allowed him crucified. Are we together? And then the scripture says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear had, nor have entered in, into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who are who love Him. There are things that are prepared for us. These things are not for the future. These things are for now. Praise the Lord. The things that are prepared for us. Um, we need to deal with procrastination. It's an enemy of our progress in the things of God. These things are not for the future. These things are now. These things that the eye has not seen, ear has not heard, you know, um, they are prepared for us because we love him and are for us now. But then the Bible says, but God, although they are not known by anyone else, that's why I told you, don't get to the internet. You can't find God in the internet. God is not found uh, in the internet. You cannot search God in the internet. You can't read God from books. You can't find God in research. Yeah, let's not do those things. You know, we need to interact with God and to get in a close intimacy. That's why I told you, he told Moses, get out of your people. Get out of your clan, leave everything and go to the place that I am going to show you. He never gave him the details. And I told you the details are in the place of intimacy and in the place of oneness with God. If you want to know God, get closer to him, get to intimate relationship with him. If you want to know God, be alone with him. That's why the gadgets are a hindrance into our knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. So he says, the Bible says, although these things are hidden to the devil, to the rulers, to the scientists, to the professors or professors, to the doctors, you know, I am with a doctor, I am here, here I am, I have a doctor. So, but these things are still hidden to the doctors and all that, elites, these things are hidden. But the Bible says, I have been revealed to you and me. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says the spirit, um, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, deep things of God. For what man 
knows the things of man except the spirit. And I said, you know, it's only the spirit, only the Holy Spirit who was there from the beginning. And the Bible says he is such as all things, even the deep things of God. And therefore, coming to discover the secrets of God concerning your destiny, concerning your greatness, concerning your work with God, you need the person of the Holy Ghost because he is all-knowing. He is the greatest teacher. He is our advocate. He is the one who reminds all us all things. He is, the, he is the one who stands by us. He is the one who guides us. We need to impress the Holy Ghost. We don't need to make the next, next move in life. The, the other move, the next move we need to make is to impress the Holy Spirit to ensure them that are not baptized with the Holy Ghost, we open up to be baptized with the Holy Spirit because he's the one who knows all things, even the deep things. He searches all things. He searches things concerning your family. He searches things concerning your business. He searches things concerning your job. He searches things concerning your relationship. He searches things, all things that you don't know. The knowledge is with the Holy Ghost. And as we impress the Holy Ghost, we consult the Holy Spirit. We relate the, with the Holy Spirit, our greatest companion. We will be full of knowledge and wisdom because things will be revealed to us. Praise the Lord, church. And then the Bible says, um, even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. That's what I am saying. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, justifying that. The Holy Spirit, no one else knows the things of God except the spirit who is from God. Um, and then the Bible says that we need to be able to know the things that are freely given to us. We are living at a time where, uh, where stupid things, sorry for using that word, are going on. I heard from far that even people pay to be told whether their name is written in the book of life. That is nonsense. You know, we are living at a time where people have to give money and buy oil to go and I, I don't know, I know that. That is nonsense. I want us to know that we need to know God. We need to have the Holy Ghost who searches all things, who knows all things. Praise the Lord. Who is going to reveal to you the mind of God concerning your life, concerning that problem that you have? And if church, if we continue becoming lazy, we are going to go far from God and be able to get into things that are not in the scriptures. Sometimes I don't want to blame them. I want to blame us because we don't want to seek the Lord and to know the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And having said that, I want us to continue today from there. I was just doing a recap. Uh, I just want us to continue there from there. Don't ask why Pastor Lucy is not telling us to pray for the word. It's because I found you praying and we have prayed. Praise the Lord. And it, I want to bring it to you again, and I know you have heard this before, that God has destined me and you for greatness, not for smallness. God has destined, destined me and you for greatness and not for smallness. And when we talk about the greatness of God, we are not, I am not anywhere on the material things. And I don't negate the material things because I also need good things. But I want us, the greatness that we are talking about is the spiritual greatness that is, uh, um, that is described or talked about in the scripture that we have just read our theme scripture. So we are all, we all have capacity for greatness. Praise the Lord. Each one of you, I want you to know, maybe you are struggling in your prayers and you are thinking, no, this thing is not mine. I want you to know it is yours. It is you as you are destined for greatness. Praise the Lord. And as a believer, as believers, we need to know that we operate in two dimensions. We operate in the, in the supernatural and we also operate 
in the natural, but we tend always to operate in the natural and, and the natural overshadows our spirituality. But do you know what? That you are a spiritual being in physical body. And therefore, we need to manifest that which is spiritual here or now. Praise the Lord. Because it is possible to be a believer and yet never experience godliness. One time I was reading a magazine. Those are many days. Those who know Mother Teresa, I am not sure whether Loan found that woman called Mother Teresa because those are many years. Um, this can only be for my age mates. You know, I read about Mother Teresa, um, Mother Teresa, when she died. I, I, I read about her story. And a friend of hers had exposed her life and said one of the things she said is that she did all things. People applauded her, told her how she has lived well. But her concern was that she never experienced God. And I felt very sad. I said, I don't want to live that kind of life. I want to experience God. She says she never experienced God. But I said, oh God, help me because I just want to experience you. Everything that I do, I want to do. And everything I do, I don't want to do anything. And I can't experience you. So we need to know that we need to experience God. Praise the Lord. And God always starts with what you have, not what you don't have. God starts with what you have, not what you don't have. You need to know that God would want to, to grow already what you have, what you have. God wants to grow your 10 minutes prayer to 30 minutes prayer to an hour, an hour's prayer to two hours prayer. God wants to grow your preaching, your five minutes preaching to 30 minutes preaching because God is going to grow what you have and is going to add to what already you have. That is our God because in God, there is nobody who is a nothing. We are all something in God. You might be nothing before some people. You may be nothing before others, but I want you to know before God who created you, you are something. Praise the Lord. We need to rejoice over that. I am something before God. And people may have dismissed you. People may have thought you don't have it, but before God, you are something. And Jehovah God, celebrates you, celebrates who you are. Praise the Lord. So God is a spirit. This means um, that we cannot deal with God on the physical. Listen to me, church. God is a spirit and we can never deal with God on the physical. And that's why we need to cry that for the ability to be able to interact with the things of God. Praise the Lord. I want to read scripture at that juncture that um, Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says, um, after this, this is John speaking, after this, you need to go back before you sleep and find out it was after what? Because me, I'm just reading from after this. That's why we said we read the scripture in context and with an inquisitive mind. So Pastor Newton, I have given the church some homework to go and find out what was after that. And the Bible says, after this, after this, uh, you know, I looked. John says, after this, um, I looked and saw a door in heaven. And, you know, saw a door in heaven and the first voice that I heard, like a trumpet speaking, you know, um, John is hearing, is seeing, you know, he says, I looked and I saw a door open in heaven. And the first voice that I heard, like a trumpet speaking with me, what does he say? What does the voice say? He said, come up higher, come up higher. In other words, come and see the things from my standpoint. Come and see the things at my standpoint. We need to, we need to be in a place 
We need to be in a, a higher place spiritually to be able to see things at God's standpoint and not from a lower position. Praise the Lord. Not from that lower position that you are in now. That's why we are not able to capture the things of God. Praise the Lord. So I came to tell you, if we want to see what God is saying, these secrets we are talking about, these treasures in the word that we are talking about, we need to come up higher. Praise the Lord. There is a place in God, God higher. We need to come up higher uh, spiritually. This God told Moses, come up higher and be there. Praise the Lord. He had not told Moses, we are not on the same page. You cannot understand what I am saying. You cannot understand my language. I need time with you. Come up higher and be there. And the Bible says, when you read the scripture, Moses was there for a longer time. God did not appear. People who he left there thought the people at the foot of the mountain might have thought this guy died. But when God appeared, things were not the same. What was God dealing with? He was dealing with his mindset, the way of thinking. He wanted God. He wanted Moses to have his mind. He wanted Moses to have his thought. He wanted Moses to have his heart. Praise the Lord. And God wants me and you to have his thought, to have his heart, to have his uh, DNA, the way of doing things, to be like God. And therefore, John is saying, after these things, John looked at the door and saw a door in heaven. And there was, there was, a, and, and the first voice, there was the first voice he had. It was like a trumpet that was speaking to him and was telling him, come up higher. What was he going to do? There are things that God was to show him. There are things that you need to see. There, there, are, things, there are things that we need to see in the scriptures. Praise the Lord. And there is a level we have to get to if we have to see those things. Otherwise, we will read the Bible like a textbook for years. We need to get into a higher level that we can hear what God is saying. Praise the Lord. So I came to tell you, come up higher. Praise the Lord. As you fast and pray, as you get to the conclusion of the fasting, I came to encourage you. There is a place called higher in God. Praise the Lord. When we get there, we interact with God. When we get there, we hear the voice of God clearly. When we get there, he says the direction of God. When we get there, we are able to forgive and let it go. When we are getting there, when we get there, we learn to show mercy. Mercy that stands in the place of judgment. We don't judge people just like that because there's a place we have seen. When we get there, money becomes immaterial. We don't complain because we are always giving in charge. Because there is a place that we have seen. Praise the Lord. So, when we get higher, let's continue. And we come to a place of accessing the revelation of truth. Praise the Lord. We get to that place of accessing the re revelation of truth. And it is that truth that sets us free. Praise the Lord. So when you hear us talking about the mysteries, the secrets, it is when the word is opened up, the revelation we get, that's what we call the mysteries. And you know why it is a secret? Because it is not for everyone. Not everybody is able to access, but you need to come up higher that you'll be able to access um, the mysteries, the secrets. Otherwise, the Bible will always be a story like any other. It is a story to them that are not that are that are not born again. It's a story to them that those who have not known the, the Lord. So it cannot be a story to us, those who have known the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it is time, brothers and sisters, to unveil those secrets in the scriptures. It is time to do that so that we will be able to apply them in our lives so that our, our work, our life is going to be productive, that we can live quality of life, that we will not exist saying we are born again, but there is no impact in my family. There is no impact in my community, 
is no impact anywhere. We are not sharing Jesus Christ to others. Even our own life is not modeling Jesus Christ. You know, we just say we are born again. But when we capture the word, the secret in the word, our lives are, 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 are transformed so that we are able to live productive life and quality of life as a Christian. Praise the Lord. Because to an ordinary person who is not born again, a carnal believer, a carnal Christian, let me tell you, carnal Christians, um, our carnal Christians um, are just there. They are born again, but they live like the non-believers. When they said, come into my life, they have never moved from there. Those are carnal believers. I am not saying they're not going to heaven, but I am saying this transformation is zero. And the scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We've got to be transformed. When we get saved, we have to start at a journey for transformation, because the scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want you to know, yes, the scripture says you have the mind of Christ. I am not negating that. Yes, you have the mind of Christ, but that mind of Christ is in potential form. You have to expose it into the word of God so that it becomes the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. So we need to access until we, because we are redeemed, we are candidates of accessing the mysteries of the gospel. We are candidates of understanding fully what the Bible is saying. You know, Mark chapter 4, um, verse 15, the Bible says, and to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And to me and you, who are born again, it is given to us. To, it is our right. As far as God is concerned, it is our right to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It is our right to know the, the, the secrets. It is our right to have revelation for this word to be opened up. It is our right because the scripture says to you, it is given. Jesus was telling the disciples because he was speaking to anybody else with the parables, you know, but when it comes to the disciples, you would open it up because for them, it is given for them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And therefore, it is given for us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It is our right. We need to have this prayer this year. Oh, Lord God Almighty, open up the mysteries of the kingdom to me. Open up. Let the mysteries of the kingdom be open to me. Let the mysteries in the gospel all pray that. And we all know Paul is a con conventional thinker. In the, in the writings of the Bible. Why? Because it was his prayer that the mysteries of the gospel would be opened to him. And therefore we need to make it a cry that, oh God, as we read the scripture, let the mysteries of the gospel be opened to us. We need to be praying, oh God, let that which was uh, hidden from the foundations of the earth be revealed to me in my time in my generation, in the name of Jesus. And that wants to be a prayer for all of us. Do you know, as we read yesterday, and I was paraf paraphrasing about Daniel. Daniel, the Hebrew boys, when King Nebuchadnezzar dreamt a dream and he forgot. When Daniel went, when he called all the magicians and the wisdom team, things lead by a wisdom team. That's why we need the wisdom of God to be offering wisdom to them that lead us. There is a gap because there is a gap in the leadership, even in the leadership of the world, because we lack people who can share the wisdom of God, like Daniel to the king. Because I told you, the king had already forgotten the dream. I am telling you, the magician, the dream team said, king, you are a joker. How can we? Tell you what you have already forgotten. But Daniel consulted God and God revealed to him and even the interpretation. Well, most of the time, we always give credit to Daniel. That's good. But the, the four men prayed and it was revealed to Daniel. So we need to pray. Even if we all of us pray and Pastor Newton is revealed to him, you are a partaker. Pastor Loan, even though we pray and it is revealed to you, you are a partaker. 
It's not because we were praying alone. It's just God revealed it to you. And we were all praying. We were all pushing. That's why oneness in the things of God is very key. Because what happens? It happens because we all prayed. Praise the Lord. And we are partakers of that blessing. Are we together, church? So we need to spiritually align, align, praise the Lord, so that we can be able to access things, the things of God, the virtues in the spirit. Because in our destinies, you know, our destinies are, are pegged by the mysteries or the secrets or the revelation you get from the Bible. We are going to blossom because of the, uh, of the revelation that we get. Praise the Lord. We are going to progress because of the revelation that we get. That's why we say one word from God can transform your life forever. That's why I love the word of God. Because if this word is not just a prophecy, then if this word if any prophecy is not tested by word, it's not my prophecy. If any dream cannot be interpreted by the word, then it's not my dream. Because I know God has exalted his word above his name. And, and everything else will pass, but this word will not pass. So we need to embrace the word. And the word of God is living. Anything living is productive. Anything living produces. Anything living bears fruit. Anything living, oh, praise the Lord, is precious. Oh, so we need it. We need the mystery of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And I want to say this as we get, as we get to a close. Um, for us to be able to access the secrets, the hidden things that are revealed to us, praise the Lord, we need to be spiritual. We need to be spiritual. I don't have a spiritual thermometer to get your spirituality. But I want you to know there is a level of spirituality. We need to push up our level of spirituality. Praise the Lord. Because God, God's word is the heritage of the redeemed. I want to repeat that. God's word is the heritage of the redeemed. And it's only accessible by spirituality. As long as we are carnal, we cannot access um, the, 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 the revelation of God. God, we need to be spiritual. Praise the Lord. Let's push our spirituality higher. Praise the Lord. Day by day, let's keep on. And we do that by the word of God. We do that by what you are doing. We do that by listening to them that are gone ahead of us. We do that by, you know, we do that by, um, by telling God to help us there. And there, let's put the push of spirituality in the name of Jesus Christ, because it is possible to be filled with the Holy Spirit and never experience that Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Um, we need to place a demand. Let's place a demand in this thing. Let's place a demand. And you know, the Bible says in Revelation chapter one, verse 10, the Bible says, I was in the spirit. Praise the Lord. I was the spirit in the Lord's day. That was the Bible says, you know, and there the Bible says, and I heard a voice behind me, praise the Lord, that spoke like a trumpet. I was in the spirit. What I'm saying, my emphasis, my emphasis here is that we must be in the spirit to be able to hear the spirit. Praise the Lord. What God is saying that we need to be in the spirit. Part time. John says, I was in the spirit. And what did he hear? He had a voice like a trumpet. We need to be in the spirit to be able to hear what God is saying. Part time. The Bible says, My sheep hears my voice. I want you to know every time God is speaking, but we have to be in the spirit to be able to hear what God is saying at time. Praise the Lord. And as I get to a conclusion, I was told that a good preacher finishes three times, but I think I am the best because I finished four times. Praise the Lord. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 to 14 says, this is what we speak, not in words. Praise the Lord. Not in words. 
which men's wisdom teach. Are we together? But in other words, what they are saying, it is what the Holy Spirit teaches. That which works for us, it is that which the Holy Spirit is teaching us. Praise the Lord. So we need to gain free access to the things of God by the Spirit. So being spiritual, what does it mean? We exalt the things that are, that are in the scriptures. Let's exalt the things that are in the scriptures other than the things that men tell us. Men have many things. Men have researched. Men have done many things. But we need to exalt the things that are in the spirit. And finally, I want you to know, to be able to access the revelation of God, we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We need to be baptized from, with the Holy Ghost to break the limitation. You know, there's a limitation. There's a limitation of accessing the word of God for a natural man. So we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be able to access those things of God. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.10, but God has revealed as to us the mysteries by the spirit it is by the spirit and if you have listened to me there is a line of thought i'm pursuing i am pursuing a line of thought of the spirit man and the holy spirit those ones are two are key the spirit man is the real you and the idea of the real you is the holy spirit that's why i am pursuing that we need to be sure we are baptized with the holy spirit we need to mature our spiritual man by pumping the word, by colonizing our bodies through fasting and waiting on God and reading the word and uh, associating with them that matter and uh, listening to the men and women of God. We need to saturate ourselves so that we are able to, to be able to capture the spirit, the, the, to capture the things of God. Praise the Lord. And because of time, I just want to um, share one more thing and be able to finish. Um, most of the time, when we talk about the things of God and we are praying about things, brethren, um, we need to stay alert and be expectant because it is possible. You know, we have time issues. Women, uh, you know, men and women of God, children of God have time issues. Praise the Lord. Like I know by now you might be looking at the clock and waiting. And But when I'm speaking to you, I turn the clock upside down. I don't want the clock to dictate me. I want the Holy Spirit to dictate me. I always turn it like that so that it doesn't control me. So if you are being controlled by the clock, then we are not in the same camp. But what I want, the point is, this is the point I'm saying, that we need to stay alert and expectant for the, for the sent word. Because every other time, there's a sent word. There's a sent word. Even in the things that you have heard throughout the week, my brother and my sister, there was a sent word for you. And the Bible says that the word that God has sent cannot go back void. Praise the Lord. It cannot go back void. It has to accomplish. And my prayer for you, for me, is the word been sent to you it is going to accomplish it is going to accomplish this year it will accomplish your business it will accomplish in your family it is to accomplish in your physical body it's going to accomplish in your relationship it's going to accomplish because the bible says it cannot go back void praise the lord in the word of god will be taken into accountability are we together so we are saying we need to keep um sometimes we we like procrastination. We push things because this time in my 21 uh, days of prayer and fasting, I expected this ha to happen and I expected that to happen. But because it did not happen, we want to say it will happen next year. I will do this next year. I will do the other next year. That's a normal human being. But I came to talk you out of that. I want you to know we cannot keep on waiting for this one day because there is no such a day in the Lord. There is no such a day in the Lord. In God, there is no one day. 
There is no such a day. Every day is the day of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even today is the day of the Lord. What you expected, what you desired, and happened today. Because even this is the day of the Lord. We don't keep waiting. One day it will happen. One day it will happen. No, every day is the day of the Lord. So we can encounter God any day. Praise the Lord. We can encounter. We can, we can encounter our word in the Lord's day because the Lord's day is any day. The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So every day is, is the day of the Lord. Your healing can be today. You can encounter your healing today because it is the day of the Lord. You can encounter your salvation today because it is the day of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can encounter your promotion today because it is the day of the Lord. Every day. Let's not keep on pushing. And I am saying that I wait for this day of the Lord. No. Every day is the day to encounter God. It is the day that the Lord has made. Even today, the Lord has made this day. We can still encounter him. So we have to give attention, you know, to the conception of the word. Let's not read. I don't want to read the scriptures. You know, I don't want to keep the scriptures and I don't encounter the voice of God. I had better repeat one chapter 20 times because I want to encounter the voice of God. Let's encounter the voice of God. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 13, and you shall seek me and you will find me when you seek, when you shall search for me, you with all your heart. Let us seek the Lord this year with all our hearts. And I want to promise you, because he has written, and he has never been a liar. He does not change his mind. We will find him. Praise the Lord. Because case in point, a woman with the issue of the blood, you know, if, if she just kept on waiting for this, for another day, she would not have been healed. Praise the Lord. So don't wait for another day. This is the day. This is the Lord's day. Praise the Lord. If the blind admires waited for one day, he would, he would have continued to be blind. Please don't wait for another day. This is the day of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if the people who encountered God in the Bible, they waited for another day, praise the Lord. They would not have, uh, they would not have overcome their challenges. Their lives would not have changed. So let us not keep on waiting for the Lord another day. This is the Lord's day. You know, it's religious to say it will happen in the day of the Lord. No, there is no another day of the Lord coming. Today is the Lord's day. Praise the Lord. Now is the Lord's day. There is no other day that is coming. Praise the Lord. Are you there? And you have been struggling with your prayer life. I want to bring it to you. This is the day of the Lord. Receive power to pray. You know the Bible says, as we are praying, we tell God, Lord God Almighty, we can meet to pray. I prayer for you. May the Lord will speak to you today. May the Lord speak to you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you there and you have been hailing? You are sick and you are waiting for that Lord's day. Today is the day of the Lord. It was the Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. And the Bible commands us to heal the sick. And therefore, today, being the day of the Lord, I release healing to you. I heal you because this is the day of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have you been walking, walking in blindness? You don't know how the year will become. The Bible says, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And therefore, the light, you know, and he saw the light was good. I release light in your life that you will be able to see the direction that you are going this year. I release the light of God. I receive the light of God. In him, the Bible says, I was light. And this light was the light of men. I release the word, the light of God upon your life and upon your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, are you saying, I need, I need the secrets in the scriptures to be recorded. I want to, I release the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, everybody let's 
speak in tongues. Those who can speak in tongues, let, let us speak in tongues. Those who do not speak in tongues, believe God, because this is the day of the Lord. I release the light of God, the light of God upon your children in every country. Be presented here. I release the light of God. Let there be the light of God. Let the light of God, let the light of God dispense every, every darkness in their lives. Let the light of God, let the light of God shine in every dark area in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I decree divine life, divine life upon each one of you. Whoever is under hearing, whoever is hearing my voice, I decree divine life, abundant life, the life of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Divine elevation, divine elevation in the name of Jesus. Divine elevation, divine elevation. You will walk in divine elevation. In the name of Jesus, Rekapokayama, in your dealings, you will be ten times excellent than the non believer. Rokopo Kapa, I release spirit of excellence, spirit of excellence in dealing with matters of the kingdom. Rekapokayapa, yes, divine, divine excellence in the name of Jesus Christ, son of the living God. You are accepted. Among the brethren, you are accepted in the beloved, and that are suffering rejection, that them are thinking you are good for nothing. You are accepted among the brethren. You are accepted. You cannot be rejected. You cannot be rejected. You cannot be rejected. I disconnect you with rejection. Where you are rejected, you will be accepted because you are accepted among the brethren in the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God is upon you. You are favored with God and favor with men. People will get up, people will get out of their way to favor you because the favor of God is upon you. People will go an extra mile to favor you because the favor of God is upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release blessings upon you. I release blessing upon you. You will not walk in spiritual blindness. You will not walk in spiritual blindness. I pray that the, you, the eyes of your understanding shall be open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. You are strengthened in the inner being. You are sharpened in the inner being. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord be with you, people of God. In Jesus' name, amen.